Howdy folks, my name is Lanso90 and welcome back to my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead version point F. Where we're finally ready to start a new game. So we'll head on over to there. We'll have a few options, custom character, preset, random, play now, fix scenario, and play now. Custom is what you're going to use 99.9% .9 of the time. Preset, after you customize the character in custom, you can save that character as a template, and then you can load it into a preset character, which is helpful if you die, <laughs> basically. You have you have your character already ready to go to boot them up again. A random character uh, creates a random character, but then allows you to preview the character and the scenario, and I think then you can like re-roll again if you want to. Play now fixed scenario makes it so that you're always in the evacuee scenario but everything else is randomized. Evacuee is the default scenario where you start in the evac shelter. We'll talk about that later. And play now is just everything's random. We're going to do custom, obviously. And then that'll take you to the world generation screen. You could actually generate worlds separately. I'm gonna go ahead and exit that. You could generate worlds separately here if you want to, but I don't like to do that. I like to just do it on character gen here. And here's all of our mods. So the ones in the right are the ones that we have installed and the ones on the left are uninstalled. Opposite of in the, the other thing, unfortunately. Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff here. A lot of these are like apps, total overhaul mods, like Magiclism and uh, Aftershock, Dark Skies Above. Those are all like huge, complete changes of the game. Uh, generic Guns makes it so all the guns aren't like... Uh, real world names and stuff it's just like instead of a ar-15 it'll be like a tactical rifle or something i don't know <laughs> no freeze no freeze is one that we installed manually as you recall so what that happens is the game always used to be very cold at the start because it starts at day zero which i think was january 1st so you're in the middle of winter but it was also still too cold for that, so my head canon was that you were also in a nuclear apocalypse. And then they warmed it up, and then they made it super cold again. So even more cold than before, and what they did was made it so it was so cold that everything was freezing. All the food and stuff, you'd have to reheat it. Well, the problem was, it was so intense that salt. I found a cardboard box of salt inside a cabinet inside a house that was frozen. The salt, the stuff that's made to, the stuff you use to make things unfreeze was frozen at the start of the game. <laughs> it was absolutely absurd. It made no sense whatsoever. They may have fixed it by now, but it was so bad that like now I don't go in without putting the new freeze mod in because who knows what the heck they're doing. Their excuse of why things are so cold is that it's the Northeast in spring. <laughs> Keep that in mind. It's not considered a winter start anymore. It starts a couple months into the year now at this first day of spring. But yeah, spring in the Northeast on the first day is probably pretty cold, but still like not quite as cold as they portray it here, I think. Anyway, I still just pretend that there's a nuclear winter going on and that kind of that kind of makes things make sense. Because <laughs> they're a little over the top on that. Let's just tab. Don't see anything else here I want to add. Oops, not tab. So I'll press shift, shift tab to go back. So you're going to encounter some situations like this where there's multiple menus within menus. One is going to, tab is going to do one of the tabs. In this case, it's the top one. I want to get to the blacklist though. So to do that, I have to do shift greater than and less than or shift comma and period for the greater than and less than keys. So blacklist turns things off. There used to be a bunch of stuff here, but there's actually not as much now. Uh, Dark Days of the Dead makes it so there's no special zombies at all. No fungal monsters makes it so there's no fungaloid zombies, which are a special type of zombie that we'll see in the game. But you may be somewhat familiar with fungaloids from different uh, game genres. Or different games within the genre, I should say. And then no monsters turns off everything except for wildlife, so you can just kind of play it as like a... I don't know. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Just like a generic survival game with no zombies or anything, right? So those are our options. And let's go greater than one more time. Balance. 
I'm not sure why these are kind of... I guess these are things that make the game like easier or harder most for the most part. And these have been changing a lot, so I might have to reread these. Endless Bionic Slots. Don't think we need that. That just makes things harder. Disable NPC needs is already on. So you can make allies in this game with uh, non-player characters. They will need food unless this mod's on, but it is on by default. So it's not... I wouldn't call it cheating to turn that one on, because it's already on. A military profession pack. I think it just adds some more military professions. I'm not going to worry about it. Speedy decks. This seems like a fun one to put on. It makes it so if our deck stat is higher, it makes it so our character is faster. And we'll talk about what speed means later. Stats through skills makes it so the more you kill stuff, uh, the more it increases your stats. We're not going to turn that on, but we are going to turn on stats through skills. So this makes our stat, our main stats go up by training our skills, which is very handy. It makes things a little bit easier. World options. We already saw this in the options menu. I mentioned you can set this at the start of world generation as well. You just change it in that option menu instead so that you don't have to change this every time if there's something you want different every time. Finalize world. We'll go ahead and do Corral City. So you can press star to randomize the name. Lakeview, Wilbur, Beaumont, so on and so forth. And when we're done with this, we can just press tab and say finished. And then we're going to get errors. <laughs> so hopefully these will be gone in your point F build once that's out. But as I mentioned before, we're actually playing a unstable build that was around the same time. Because it wasn't in the launcher yet, but it should be there soon. Hopefully we'll be able to swap over to it as soon as it's we're able, but we'll see. All right. So this first screen here, it's relatively simple. There's not very many options on it. It says points, multiple pools, single pool, or free form. So multiple pools means that each of these tabs here is more customization of our character. And for multiple tool pools, we get some points in each one that we can't spend anywhere else. I don't like that. It makes things harder, obviously. I like single pool. It makes it so all of your points are collected into one. This makes it so I can take some penalties in one section and use them to get ben benefits in another section, basically. And then freeform is just cheat mode where you have infinite points, right? So we're going to do single pool. This also used to be the default option when the game was older. And then they made it so the default was multiple pools. But no, we're not going to do that. That's horrible. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about our scenarios. So scenarios are how you kind of the situation where you start your game. So as I said, evacuee is the basic standard one. Uh, you'll start as a survivor class, which has like a winter jacket, I think. You'll have a multi, no, multi tool. You'll have a pocket knife. You'll have some water. You'll basically have all the basics stuff. And that's probably what we're going to play just to uh, demonstrate how the game works, obviously. And so we can get our practice in. But it's the standard one. And you start in an evac shelter, which is like a safe location outside of town. There's a little computer in there that produces a little bit of light, so you can actually do some work at nighttime, which is very handy. And so on and so forth. As you've seen in some of the situations, there's the random uh, or the uh, surrounded starts. And as I said, with a surrounded start, that surrounds the evac stations with zombies, unless they've changed it. So it only is only the one that you start at. All right. So all these challenges are incredibly hard. <laughs> Fungal infection, you've been infected by a fungaloid. You're going to have to find some antifungal medication to deal with that. Let me fix my camera real quick. And it's pretty difficult to find like a fungal infection. This one's probably not as hard though as compared to some of these other ones. Just the thing is you're going to have to find the antifungal medication, which might be hard. Really bad day. Everything that can be wrong with you is wrong with you. You're zombie infected. You've, you're drunk and you're sick. There's a nearby fire, which means the building's burning down. No starting NPC. We'll talk about the starting NPC, I guess, now. So unless you turn it off... Actually, I don't know whether it's on or off right now. I forgot to check. It used to be in the debug section. You can see if you're going to start with an NPC or not. They can be helpful, especially if you start in the town... It's just a character who spawns next to you, who isn't a player, obviously. 
and uh, they'll get into fights with zombies and stuff. And any zombies that see them will try to fight them. You can also recruit them to your cause if you do their side quest for them. And then they'll work with you, which can be very handy. But basically, they're a pretty good get out of jail free card from uh, difficult situations. Which is probably why they have them turned off in the challenge modes, because it'll make it too easy. Because you just use them to uh, fight all the zombies and then run away. Medieval Peasant, you start as a churl. You start in the wilderness, which is actually pretty good. And that means you're pretty far away from town. Uh, the only one that's confusing, or the real downside of this one is I think this character can't read. It doesn't say it here, but I think the churl cannot read. Lab Patient, start in a locked lab. This is a lab challenge kind of game. This is a different, completely different gameplay scenario than the base game, so I wouldn't mess with it. And it's going to be difficult. Lab staff, you also start in the locked lab, except you're not a patient this time. So you might have a little bit more gear, probably a little bit easier, but still not a great time. <laughs> Abandoned, this one, you start in a hospital. That's extremely bad. Have you watched The Walking Dead? Hospitals are completely full of zombies. Be very difficult to get out of life, but it's probably easier than some of these other ones. Migo camp. Migos are horrible creatures from outer space. They're sort of uh, uh, Lovecraftian inspired. They're also like that one SCP that it kills things, or it kills people, and then it says words in the voice of the last person it killed and lures, lures you to them. They do the same thing as that. And they are incredibly big and strong and powerful and well armored with like uh, chitinous armor. They're like giant insect creatures, like giant crab things. They're horrible. And uh, also, a Migo camp is like a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> it's horrible. You will die extremely quickly and die immediately. I don't know if there's any way to actually win this scenario. Because I've gone into a Migo camp after I've been fully upgraded and equipped, and you can't stay in there more than like a few minutes. It's crazy. Island prison. You're a uh, prisoner or a convict on a island prison, obviously. Um, just like the hospital, there's lots of zombies inside the prison. In particular, there's some very big zombies in here. I have survived this one, but I did have to load and reload several times. And then you can swim to shore and then you can just start like a normal game. You might be saying, oh, why would I do any of these difficult modes? Well, you get plus six points for doing this one. You get a ton of extra points for doing these challenges. But obviously, these are like so hard that <laughs> there isn't really a feasible way to make this work other than loading and reloading a ton of times, which is what I did for this one. Helicopter crash. You are a military personnel of some sort. You start as a National Guard by default. Uh, you start in a crashed helicopter on the ground. Uh, you will start with limb wounds. This can be pretty serious, though. You can have, like, only a few HP left and some wounds, and you'll be bleeding out. I don't think you start with broken limbs. I don't think it quite goes that hardcore. But it can be very deadly. This one... This one I do fairly often, though. This isn't nearly as hard as the challenges. And uh, I don't think the National Guard starts with a gun, but you can change it in the profession screen to, like, one step up. And you'll get a big old, big old heckin' gun and a bunch of stat points and stuff as well. So the helicopter crash is actually pretty good. It gives you five extra points. You also lose points for picking, being a National Guard and stuff. But that one's viable. That one's viable. Infected. People say that the infection isn't the zombie virus, but I think the best way to think about it is that it is the zombie virus. So it means you're infected with the zombie virus, you've been bitten, and it's advanced. You have to find antibiotics to deal with this. There's a few things you can do to deal with bite wounds that get infected. Like right at the start, you can solderize them, which hurts really bad, but it gets rid of the infection. Or the best way is with like a med kit or something. But if it gets to the point where it's advanced, which is what this is, the only way to cure is with antibiotics, they're extremely hard to find for some reason. So, no. <laughs> this one's very hard. This is harder than a helicopter crash, technically, even though a helicopter crash gives you more points. Prison. Pretty much the same thing as island prison, but it's not on an island. Might be easier to escape. Ambush. You start outside town. I guess you're just anywhere on the map. There's a description here at the bottom, by the way, of what these mean. So I think you're just in the middle of nowhere on this one. And you have a surrounded start where zombies are nearby. 
I haven't tried this one. This one's new. Might be able to do it. It depends on what zombies are there, though. <laughs> you get no NPC, though. I would say if you had an NPC, it might be possible. Sheltered. Okay. Apocalypse broke out. You were funneled in a nearby shelter. Here you live, never leaving. So, this one... Actually, it doesn't say it does anymore. Supplies are running low for the first time since the cataclysm. I guess because it's not default, it's the same thing. So I guess ambush also takes place later. I think it's one year later. In winter. And that's what's also happening in the sheltered start. It's actually like a pretty good start because you start in like a really cool enclosed shelter or a LMOE shelter, which is better than the evac station really. In some ways, there's one way which the evac shuttle is better, and that's because it has uh, the computer, and these don't. But these are even more remote than the evac shelter from town, so they're safer, so on and so forth. And they have more, like, water and stuff nearby, usually. But it starts later, so the zombies are more advanced. It also starts in winter, so there's no food growing. And also, because it's a year later, all the food in the stores and stuff is rotten, for the most part. Large building is basically, you can pick whatever large building you want, but it's going to be stuff like the hospital, the prison, uh, a mall, stuff like that. Anything big, those will always be hard. It also says that zombies spawn nearby on top of that, so that makes things even harder. Surrounded. Looks like you can only pick in-town locations. This used to be one that was just evacuee, except it had a surrounded start. But now it looks like you can only select out of town locations, and we'll kind of talk about that once we get to the end here. Uh, zombies are nearby. You might be able to get this one to work. It depends on what location you start with. Burning building. Same situation, except instead of being surrounded by zombies, the house is on fire. Houses burn down real quick. So you have to think pretty quick. But just like surrounded, based on the town location, you might be able to make that work. I've done it before a few times. Crazy party. You start in a private resort. <laughs> you start as a lost submissive. We'll talk about that profession when we get to professions here. Um, <laughs> so you're going to start with uh, pretty bad gear, I would say. But you start in a private resort, which is probably going to be pretty far away from town. There should be infinite sources of water there because there will be pools. Um, should be a fairly safe location. I'm not going to say it's perfectly safe, though. But I haven't tried it myself either, so I don't know. Squatter. Not exactly sure what this is. This sort of looks like this looks like the same as evacuee. Got relative safety. He's the only one here now. Not the first person to be here. I guess you're starting with a bad shelter, is what this is, because there is like good and bad shelters where like there's less food there and the windows are broken out and stuff. You probably do that. It probably wouldn't be too bad. Missing. You start in town, but there's no special negative modifiers other than no NPC. The next summer is even further into the year. It's two years later. But uh, you start in summertime, so you're not going to have to deal with the cold. No starting NPC outside of town, which means you're probably in a good safe location. The mascot rises. Just lets you be a furry, basically. You start in a fur suit. <laughs> or actually, it doesn't even say that. I think you start with a fursuit, though, even though it says Survivor. And you start in a food place, a break room. Get zero points, though. So this is harder than evacuee, but you don't get anything for it. This is kind of fun. Wilderness, you're going to start in the middle of the wilderness. Uh, you could. Evacuee's better, though. For uh, zero points, obviously. Safe place. This, I guess, is new. I don't know what this is. It depends on what the safe buildings are. Let's go ahead and try to take a look at the what the buildings are. So we're just going to skip some stuff. Don't worry about it yet. Starting location. I have to play slash. So we can start a refugee center. So refugee centers have a bunch of NPCs there that you can trade with and talk to and stuff. Cabin is just like a cabin in the woods. Fairly safe. And there's usually like a wood furnace and stuff in there. A little movie shelter. A very nice little shelter. The only problem is it's underground and you can't drag a shopping cart underground. We'll talk about what that means later. <laughs> Hermit Shack. 
I don't think that's great. I think I've encountered one. It's just kind of like a bed in a house in the middle of nowhere. It's okay, I guess, but not nothing to write home about. Farms are pretty nice. They have lots of food growing out. They have a pretty big home, and there's usually a well or something there for infinite water. Horse ranches are new. You can ride horses in this game. I don't think I've been able to pull it off, but you can tame horses and ride them, which would be pretty cool. And they would be there at the horse ranch. Lake cabin. I haven't seen this, but it's probably just a cabin near a lake, which means you'd have an infinite source of water for sure. I don't know what a freshwater research station is. I don't know what a lighthouse island is. <laughs> there you go. Let's go back. Back tab. Shift. Gotta do shift tab to get back. Bottom of mind. You're deep in a mine. Sounds not so bad, maybe. I think you start with like a flashlight or something for this. The problem is there's some very huge, hard to kill creatures in mines. And also they're usually like irradiated as well. But there could also be like power armor and a rocket launcher down there. At least there used to be. Experiments. This will start you with random genetic uh, quirks because there's lots of like mutations and stuff you can get in this game. So experiment will start you with those. And as you can see, this actually costs more. Which is actually kind of well, actually I guess bottom of mind does give you a point. I was gonna say if it if it costs a point, that'd be crazy. But experiment costs points, but it gives you mutations, which might be pretty good. Or they could be bad. It depends. The last delivery. You start with a food truck. So I assume this is a working vehicle. It might be out of gas, maybe. But working vehicles are pretty good. There are vehicles in the game. There's actually a pretty complicated vehicle construction system, which is really cool. And, uh, yeah, this would start you with a working vehicle, which would be pretty awesome, which is probably why this costs more. Let's see. Last flight. This is a newer one. This one actually starts you with a freaking helicopter. It doesn't have any fuel, though. You land on a bridge. I don't know how flying vehicles work. It seems kind of scary to me. I wouldn't do it, but certainly an option. High tech, low life. For the end of the world, bionics are reserved for the rich and famous. You might not have been either, but you want it in. Just repetitive with little to lose. If you went to deep, however, your augmentation may have come at a price. So you're a failed cyborg. So you might have some mechanical upgrades, sort of uh, cyberpunk stuff that work, but you might have a bunch that don't work, and they might actually give you some penalties. Kind of depends on what they are, and I think it's randomized at the start. Overrun, you start at a military base. Oh, it actually says you're a survivor, though. Despite all the soldiers, the guns, and minefields, the base you were on got overrun by the dead. Everyone was ordered to fall back to the armory, but during the chaos, you got lost, and I was stuck in a warehouse all alone. Not sure if anyone made it to the armory or if you're the last man alive. So you probably have access to lots of military weapons and stuff, but you don't start as a military character yourself. Whew. We're all out of time for this video, though. We're just going to go over these one at a time. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, remember to hit the like button. Keep the conversation going in the comments and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Until next time, I hope you have a good day.